And our friend Matt Sorger is here. And I knew the day was going well because I kept checking uh, the tweets and kept checking Facebook. And I could see um, that a great deposit was being made, uh, especially uh, into the lives of our singles, but into so many people from our congregation. And when I knew that Matt was... When I knew that Matt was going to be here, uh, I, I just prevailed upon him uh, just to stay over and minister in our 530 service tonight and deposit once more. Matt's ministry is based in Long Island, right around the corner, uh, just right across the sound. I said to him, we met uh, earlier today, I said, Matt, how is it that you, we've been right around the corner from each other for 20 years and this is the first time that we, uh, we have had the chance to meet and get acquainted uh, from his ministry headquarters there. He ministers all across the country, around the world. He's an author. Um, many of his books and different materials, teaching tapes, and are, are out on the table, and I hope you'll take a look at those. But I want to ask you to just stand on your feet, give your best welcome for our friend, Matt Sorger. Hello, everybody. Great to be here with you tonight. I was very excited when uh, the church opened up their doors for me to stay. I would have stayed for tomorrow, too, but we already had something scheduled in Maryland. But I'm glad to be here with you tonight, and I love the heart of the leadership team that's here. Can we honor them and thank the Lord for Pastor Glenn, his wife, family, and all the pastors that are here on staff and the, all the servants and the people that have poured out today. This place have been, has been buzzing all day long. Hallelujah. And all the singles learned how to find their man and find their woman. <laughs> oh, praise God. How many were here today during the day? How many weren't? Praise God. Yeah, they, they already found their mate. Praise God. No. <laughs> yes, but we had a, we had a fun time. We, we taught all the, the women how to name it and claim it when a man walks through the door. No. <laughs> I'm Joe Gang. <laughs> but we did, we had, a, we had a great time today, and we're going to have a great time tonight. And I do want to say hello to someone very, very special. It's so funny today preaching at a singles conference because I'm getting married in two months. So it's my last opportunity to <laughs> preach as a single person. Praise God. So anyway, hello, my dear, beloved Stephanie, my princess watching online. Everybody say hi, Stephanie. hi Stephanie. Everyone says hi. We all love you. And her parents are also watching. And it's amazing. I love the support that I get from, from this very dear lady. Every time I'm traveling around, if it's web streamed, she is home watching it and praying for us here as she's watching from home. So it's a great blessing from God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So how many are happy tonight? How many are excited for the destiny that is on the church in this hour? We are, and I believe this with all my heart, we're living in such an amazing hour of history where there is a great culmination of moves of God that have swept over nations and around the globe. In this hour, we're coming to this, to this point where, where moves of God are all converging together. And I believe we're going to see the greatest things we've ever seen before. I really do. And I believe where, you know, one of the benefits of a travel ministry is you get, you get a broad perspective. Uh, we just got back from Holland. We've, me, my parents are here on the front row. Mom and dad stand up. Say hi to everybody. My mom and dad. And my dad has traveled with me everywhere to over 30 nations now over the last 12 years. We've traveled full time together. We hit about 10 nations a year and the rest in the United States. And uh, we've been able to glean this perspective of what the Holy Spirit is doing around the world. And I know that even as we transition into this year in January, that there has been a fresh touch of God being released, a fresh visitation, a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we're seeing it around the nations. Praise God. So we are going to jump into all God's doing. We're going to jump in to all that he's doing in this hour. And, you know, we love to see people, you know, just really empowered. And I believe God doesn't want you just having a spirit-filled life. He wants you having a spirit-empowered life. 
where you know you're not just filled to have a good feeling but you're filled to really walk in authority walk in victory walk in joy walk in peace you know have an authority in the spirit realm that when you command sickness to go it goes when you command a demon to go it goes it doesn't say no for five hours I'm not into these five-hour deliverances where you're rolling around on the floor with somebody saying, come out, no, come out, no, come out, no. It's like, no. <laughs> I like how Jesus did it. Come out, and in one hour, the legion would be gone. But I believe God wants to bring the church into such a level of authority that as we speak a word, the kingdom of God manifests. The power of God, all of heaven, backs up the words that come out of our mouth. And it's not just because it's the words themselves, but it's the life it's the relationship with God. It's, it's, it's the yieldedness. It's all of it that goes on behind the scenes that releases authority into the words that come out of our mouth. Because I know there's a, there is the general authority of the believer. There is. We all have authority in Christ because we have faith in him. There's authority in his name. But not everybody walks in the same authority. If you, you know, it's like, you know. If you have anger, don't go trying to cast demons of anger out of people. <laughs> You're not going to have a lot of authority over it. You got to first get authority over yourself and then get that breakthrough and God will give you authority to help other people. Right? Yeah. It's like the parable where Jesus said, you know, take the, you know, the plank out of your own eye so that you could see clearly to help take the speck out of your brother's eye. If we've got a big plank sticking out of our eye, you know what happens when you try to help? This is people that are there. They think they're anointed to be Holy Ghost police. And they want to fix everybody. But meanwhile, they need to be fixed, right? So they got this big plank sticking out of their eye. And they're like, oh, let me get that speck out of your eye. Boom! And they just, like, knock people out. But if you take the plank out of your own eye, then you see clearly to then actually really be able to help somebody else to take out of their eye what's hindering them. And what's hurting them. So every breakthrough we get personally and privately grants a new measure of authority to help somebody else get a breakthrough. So praise God. If you want to have a deliverance ministry, start by casting all the demons out of yourself first. It's a great way to practice. It really is. It's a great way to practice. And it's not hard. Repent of your sin. You know? Do it like this. Go into your bedroom, close your door, you know, go into a secret place, pray. Say, Jesus, forgive my sin. Confess your sin. That's a good place to start. Confess your sin. Ask God to forgive you. Tell the demon to leave. Throw up. You're free. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes you throw up. But I've seen people laugh demons out. It's way better. It's way better. Just laugh demons out. Praise God. It's a lot more enjoyable. I've seen people get totally set free by laughter. I've seen people transformed by laughter, by one visitation of the glory of God. And it makes no sense to the logical mind. Why are you laughing? You shouldn't be laughing. And I've had moments where it looks like people should not be laughing, but they're having an encounter with God that totally is transforming their life. That's why we love the Holy Spirit. Because he can accomplish things in us that we can't do ourselves. Have you learned by now you can't change yourself? There's some things about you that are hard to change. Just ask the people around you. <laughs> they will testify. They will let you know. Yes. <laughs> but nothing is impossible with God. Even the things we can't change about ourselves. God is so big. He can change those things. So we don't just get relieved in his presence, but we get transformed by his inner power. God really wants to bring permanent change in our lives from glory to glory, not crisis to crisis or glory to crisis, but glory to glory. Amen. So I will just briefly mention that we have a resource table out in the foyer with lots of great anointed teachings and my book is out there, and I'll sign it for you after service. And if I sign it, it's doubly anointed. <laughs> this one, you know, a lot of Christians get stuck in first heaven living. I call it first heaven earthly, earthly living. They get stuck in just what they can see, feel, and perceive with their natural senses. 
and distractions of life and stress of life and all of these things put people into whirlwinds because they just get stuck in this place right here. But the Bible says we're seated in heavenly places, far above all powers and principalities. And there's a place we can live out of being seated in Christ in that dimension. It's a higher dimension of the glory. And we have a whole teaching on that called living from the third heaven. And it's all about manifesting your royalty as a son and daughter of God and how to govern from the courts of heaven and uh, just live from a third heaven reality. And then this one, living out of the overflow. You know, God wants to so saturate you that you are so filled with the Holy Spirit that every work of service, every work of ministry is a natural overflow of the presence of God that's in you where you're not even striving to see miracles happen, they're just happening because the presence of God is overflowing from your life. You don't even have to strive to cast demons out. You just walk into the room and they all leave. Praise God. Yeah. I think it's the best way to get set free too. Squeeze the enemy out of your life. Squeeze them out. By getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Because two things cannot occupy the same space. You get more filled with the Holy Spirit. More filled with the truth. More filled with the word. More filled with him. He'll squeeze everything out. Hallelujah. And then we've got this teaching series called the three brains. Did you know you have more than one brain? You do. You have more than one brain. And I found this out studying it out. I, you know, I was pre-med in college before I was called into ministry, and I loved, you know, studied all sorts of sciences and math and all that stuff, and I understand our DNA and how that works, but there is, there is in the human body three unique brains that science and medicine has discovered, and what the Lord showed me through that and through scripture, he taught me how, actually how the person of the Holy Spirit talks to us and communicates to us, and which brain he talks to, and how to be really spirit-led. It's really interesting. Praise God, we all have more than one brain. Because otherwise, some of us would be in trouble. Hallelujah. I like to have fun in church. It's okay to laugh. I know some of you are sitting there, you want to laugh really bad. You're like... Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit brings freedom. He brings liberty. He brings transformation. When I was called by God as a teenager, I remember saying to God, Lord, I don't ever want to just stand up and give a nice teaching. I want your presence. I want your anointing to move with it because, because unless we have an encounter with you, God, We'll stay the same. But I tell you, when God comes into our lives and he encounters us, he will not leave us the same. God will not leave you the same. You are destined to look just like Jesus. It is your destiny. It's your ultimate destiny. Created in the image of God to look just like him. And you know why God is going to make sure you look just like Jesus? Because he has to live with you forever. So he's going to make sure you are as much like him as possible. I love the prophetic hour that we're in. Turn over to Hosea, the book of Hosea. Hosea chapter 6 outlines for us really a blueprint of where the church is going, where all of us are going. I'll never forget the meeting where as I began to teach and preach, there was a, a dear lady out in the congregation and she started to laugh while I was talking. And it was in a church where they were not used to anything like that. And I remember as she was laughing, people were looking at her, giving her the eye. Giving her the face. Like, what are you doing? You're not supposed to laugh. He's, he's talking. It's rude. But I knew it was God. You know why? Because it didn't distract me. 
It did not distract me one bit. Didn't break my concentration. I let her laugh the whole service. She laughed the whole time I was preaching. She left the meeting laughing. She got home at 1 o'clock in the morning laughing. She, fell, she woke her husband and children up laughing in the house. She fell asleep laughing. She woke up the next morning laughing. She came back the following night. And she walks up to me at the front. She says, I have to talk to you. I said, okay. She said, I was the lady laughing last night. I said, I know. I remember. <laughs> and she said, but you have to understand something. As I'm laughing, I'm saying to myself, why are you laughing? Why? There was no natural reason for her to be laughing. She said, but what you don't know is that I have never laughed a day in my life. I don't even remember smiling a day in my life. She said, when I was a child, I was in nine foster homes throughout all my childhood and te early teen years. I was, every year I went into a new foster home for nine years. In nine different foster homes. She said, I was sexually abused in every single home. Throughout her whole life, all she knew was sexual abuse. She said, I came into this church last night and I was filled with rage and self-hatred and bitterness and depression. And I sat in this church in that condition. And then all of a sudden, I started to laugh. And I had no idea why I was laughing. She said, but all I know is that when I woke up this morning, it felt like 10,000 pounds had lifted off of my life. And all of the hatred and all the bitterness and anger was gone. She said, and I'm free. You see, God is alive. He is a living God. And he loves to crash in on people and encounter them in a way that will change them. He loves to. Because he's a personal God. And he wants to encounter us. He wants to help us. He want, he's there for us. He's there for you. And I'll never forget these moments where the glory of God comes in and lives are eternally changed and set free. And a life that the enemy thought he destroyed, suddenly the enemy loses his grip and is totally defeated. And I'm going to tell you, God is really good at turning everything back around, right back on the devil. He is really good at turning it all around. And using it all for good, you see, because the enemy doesn't see everything. He doesn't know everything. He tries with his assignments to destroy people's lives. And at times he thinks he is. But God always sees the future. God knows more than he does. And God is so big. This is how big God is. He is so big that he's able to take even the worst things that have happened in your life and somehow turn them around for your good. And then when God heals you and God sets you free, watch out, devil, because now you have just stepped into a new level of anointing where not only have you encountered God, but you're going to be a point of contact for somebody else to encounter God. Because it always works that way. The work that God does in you, he multiplies through you. And it's how God redeems what has happened in your life and makes the devil pay for anything he ever tried to do against your life. God is really good at that. He's really good. And I'm sure the enemy regretted the day he inspired people to have Jesus Christ crucified. Because while he thought he was winning, while he thought he was destroying the Son of God, in fact, in fact, God was allowing it to happen so that in the end of the day, the enemy would be the one destroyed. Now, I recently heard an amazing visionary encounter. And I know it's not word for word like this in the Bible, and I know that. So it was a visionary encounter someone had. But they saw the account in the spirit where Jesus, after he was crucified, went down into hell and took the keys of death and hell away from the enemy. And the way they saw it in the spirit realm was that the enemy gathered all of the powers and all of the principalities and all of the demons, gathered them all around to see the defeat of the Son of God. And as they were all there waiting 
to see the defeat of the Son of God. There, Jesus was crucified. He goes down into hell, and they think they are about to see the Son of God totally defeated. But then he rises, takes the keys of death and hell, and then you know the scripture where it says that he made an open show of powers and principalities. He made an open show of them. This person saw it. Their prophetic individual, they saw the Lord melt the faces of all the powers and principalities like wax, melted their faces. Made a show of them. Made an open show of them. <laughs> Melted their faces. That was the best thing I heard in a long time. I was like, that is the best thing. Whether it's totally true or not, I don't know. But it's the best thing I've heard. <laughs> Just the thought of Jesus saying, oh, yeah, you think you defeated me? Boom! And just melt all their faces. Praise God. Just made an open show of all of them. You see, and that's what God does in your life. Where the enemy thinks he's won. Where the enemy thinks he's gotten a grip. Where the enemy thinks he's had his way. Then the resurrection power of God is released in your life. And the enemy is made an open show of. I guarantee you he regrets the day he ever tried to hurt our family with sickness. That's how we ended up all coming to know God. My mom was sick. And I was 12 years old at the time. Sick for two years on bottles of medicine. Two years after that, went to a Catholic charismatic healing mass where the priests were filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. And she went forward, nice, quiet Catholic mass. Church doesn't even have to be Pentecostal to be anointed. Glory to God. It was Catholic. It was Catholic. The whole thing was Catholic in style. Catholic mass. Beginning to end. And she went forward. The priest very calmly, very gently went to pray for her. He did not pray Pentecostal style. I've seen Pentecostal preachers pray Pentecostal style. They don't lay hands on you. They smack you. <laughs> Hard. To the point where you need healing after they pray for you. I don't know if you've ever been to those kind of meetings. I have, I have been. I have attended. I was in an outdoor tent meeting once. I started on the front row. I ended up in the back row. As the preacher did a flying leap over the pulpit, landed on the ground, started body slamming people on the front row. And as he approached me, I moved my seat to the back. And I put a, chair row, a, a, a row of chairs in front of me, barricaded myself, and I said, go ahead, try to body slam me. Because <laughs> if God is going to put me down, you do not need to throw me down. So, you know, you got the Pentecostal preachers. Receive. And the person's like, you're pushing me. They're thinking it. You're pushing me. Receive. You're pushing me. Receive. And everyone's like, wow, look at the anointing. They can't even stand up straight. And the person's like. <laughs> and then finally, they just fall over because they're tired. Like, oh, fine, I'll fall. Well, the best is when you see Pentecostal deliverance. Oh, yeah. Devil! Come out! They shake the person. Person, they shake them so hard they get sick and throw up, and they're not even getting delivered. They're just thrown up because they're getting shaken so much. Where was I? No. <laughs> I go off on these little, praise the Lord. Yes. Charismatic Catholic mass. It was quiet. It was peaceful. In Jesus' name, the power of the Holy Spirit, the authentic, dynamite, miracle, electrocuting power of God, overshadowed by mom's body, threw her 10 feet through the air. She landed on the ground, volts of power surging through her body, and she got up totally healed by God. Totally healed by God. And we as a family got instant revelation that not only was Jesus the Savior and the forgiver of our sins, but he was our healer, he was our deliverer, he was everything. And we had such childlike faith. Everything we prayed for was instantly answered. I'm telling you, there really is something to having the faith of a child, of just believing 
And we just believed everything we read. We started reading the Bible. We just believed every single thing we read in the Bible. We just read it and believed it. Prayed, and it happened. God wants all of us living in resurrection power. I mean, living in resurrection power to the point where you are carrying so much of God on your life that you are dangerous. And you see, God healed my mom of sickness, and now as a result of that, what happened? It multiplied, and we've seen thousands of people healed and saved now because of that situation that started out really bad, that looked really traumatic. God was able to turn that thing around, give us a breakthrough, and then grant other people a breakthrough. Praise God. So get really happy. Get really, really happy for anything that the enemy has ever tried to work against you. Get really happy because God is always a step ahead of the enemy and God is really good at turning it around back on his head and working it for your good. Yeah. Praise God. And God is bringing all of us into this place. I believe, I believe he's bringing the corporate body of Christ into a place and I believe this, that God is looking for wineskins that he could pour his oil and his wine into that will be able to hold and sustain what he pours out into the earth. I believe even churches, God is looking for churches, he's looking for people that will be wineskins, that will be able to steward and hold what he wants to crash in on this world. Praise God. You see, in the glory, in the glory, the limits come off your life. In the glory, the limits come off. Earthly limits, physical limits, mental limits. I believe even mental limits come off in the glory. I believe in the glory of God, we receive creative ideas from the mind of Christ, from the mind of the Holy Spirit, that can bring major breakthroughs for humanity. In the glory, the earthly limits have to give way to a higher spiritual reality. Physical sickness has to give way to divine health. I mean, divine healing is wonderful, but we're going for divine health. Where the church is so insulated by the glory of God that when we say, how many here need healing? No one raises their hand because everyone's healed. Where the church is just so walking in the glory that, that sickness can't even touch the body of Christ. Why not? Why can't we believe God for that? I mean, the Israelites, millions of people in an old covenant, the Bible says not one of them had their shoes wear out, not one was weak, not one was sick. And that's under an old covenant protection of God. We're in a new covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a better covenant. Which means if they had it back there on that covenant, we can have it here in this covenant. Walking and living in the revelation, in the presence of God's glory in our lives. See, I love it. When the glory, when the glory, when the glory is moving in you, on you, around you, things will, things will just start happening. Things will just start happening. Like there was, earlier this year, we started off the year in January in Washington, D.C. So we were doing a meeting down there, and there was a lady sitting right in the middle. She had, I think, seven foot surgeries where they had to remove her ankle and with metal basically weld her foot to her leg and it was permanently attached with metal because she shattered her ankle. So she had no more physical ankle at all was metal. And as she's sitting there and the glory of God comes upon her, all of a sudden she starts moving her foot around. She gets so excited about it, she jumps up and starts screaming, starts running up and down the aisle with a brand new ankle. That's what the glory does. The glory of God. 
recreate something that's not even there. He doesn't just heal, he recreates. He makes brand new. Like the time we were in a meeting and God started popping open deaf ears all around the room. All around, it was actually a stadium. Deaf ears started popping open. And my team brought this little 12-year-old girl up on the platform and they pulled her hair back. And I could see when they pulled her hair back, she didn't even have ears. She was born without ears. She just had two little holes in the side of her head. No eardrums, no ears, nothing. Well, how do you heal deaf ears if, she, if someone doesn't even have ears? It's more than just a healing. You need a recreative miracle. And as the power of God hit this young girl, all of a sudden she heard a popping on the inside of her head and God put eardrums in her head. Her ears popped open and she heard for the first time in her life. You know what's awesome about this? And I've preached on revival and I've talked about revival, but I'll say this. We don't even have to wait for a sovereign outpouring of a move of God that sweeps over a region or a territory or a nation or a people because the Holy Spirit has been granted already. And if you will merely get hungry enough for him and desire him enough and press into him, you can begin to walk in an anointing and a power and a glory to the point where you become a walking revival. In the sense of what we think revival is, where we see God moving, we see things happening, we see the power of God manifesting and hearts changing and lives being transformed and God moving. I believe you can be a point of contact between heaven and and earth because Jesus prayed it and he taught us to pray it and you know what it's the one prayer that has snuck its way into every Christian denomination whether you are Presbyterian Catholic Protestant Baptist all across Christianity no matter what denomination you are in the prayer is prayed our Father who art in heaven holy is your name your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. They are praying it night and day. Some understand what they're praying. Some have no idea what they're praying, but they're praying it. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is a powerful prayer. And if Jesus told us to pray it, it's because he wants to answer it. If he said pray for my will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, it's because he wants to really answer that prayer. On earth as it is in heaven. And your life becomes a point of contact, becomes a literal walking open heaven. Your life connects heaven and earth. Because Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. The atmosphere of heaven lives on the inside of you. You become a point of contact for people to experience heaven, even here in the earth. On earth as it is in heaven. That's a glorious prayer. Because there is no sickness in heaven. There is no demons in heaven. There's no oppression in heaven. There's no brokenness in heaven. Everything's whole. Everything's healed. Everything's living. Everything's alive. Everything is joyful. Everything is praising God. Even the flowers and trees are praising God. On earth as it is in heaven. And I really, I don't think we have to die, wait till we die to experience heaven. I believe we can begin to experience his glory, his presence, his anointing now. Wow. It's a lifestyle. And Hosea 6 prophesies about where we're going. And it's, he breaks the vision down into three days. And he says, he says it like this, Come and let us return to the Lord. For he's torn so that he may heal us. He's stricken so that he may bind us up. After two days, he'll revive us, quicken us, give us life. And on the third day, he'll raise us up that we may live before him. Breaks this vision down into three days. On the first day, turn to the Lord, he'll heal you. You know what day one is? The day of turning to the Lord, it's the day of salvation. 
It's a day where we turn to God and he heals our lives. Day two, he says, I will revive you. I will quicken you. I'll give you life. That's the day of revival. It's a day where you're, you're not only saved, but you also experience the reviving, renewing presence of God in your life. And day one is amazing, and day two is amazing, and a lot of churches camp out at day one. A lot camp out at day two. But there's actually a third day, and it's where we're all going. It's where the corporate body is going. He says, on the third day, I will raise you up. I will lift you up. I will resurrect you. There is a day prophesied here by Hosea that foreshadows or talks about people who will not only be turned towards God, not only healed, not only made whole, not only revived, not only refreshed with his presence, but raised up, resurrected. In other words, living just like Jesus was raised from the dead by the same spirit. The Bible says, we also shall be quickened. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that raised him, that resurrected him, that lifted him up. That same resurrection power comes into our lives. And it doesn't just refresh us and renew us. Renews, it doesn't just renew us, it empowers us. It releases resurrection presence, resurrection power. To the point where you're raising the dead. Hallelujah. I raised the dead once. I did. My fish. <laughs> but you got to start somewhere. <laughs> if you don't have any dead people to pray for and your fish dies, pray for your fish. My poor little fish, you died. I had a fasting fish because I'm an evangelist and I travel. <laughs> my fish became a fasting fish. But one day my fish died. And I said, fish, you're not going to die. Poor thing was just floating in the water. And I commanded that thing. I said, you come back in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, the moment I spoke to it, the whole body, whoa, shaka, the whole body jerked like this. And he started swimming around in the tank. <laughs> Resurrection power. Hallelujah. Builds faith. There's your fish from the dead. You'll have more faith to help raise someone else from the dead. <laughs> in Africa, Heidi Baker has seen her, her group of pastors. They've seen... Over 500 people raised from the dead. Resurrection power. How many here want to live in resurrection power? You want to walk in resurrection power? You know, part of living in resurrection power, and I just want to close with these two thoughts, and I'm going to say them very quickly. Walking and living in resurrection power. Number one, if you're going to really walk in resurrection power, you have to know what it is to walk and live in the Holy Spirit, to follow the ark of the presence of God. Like in Joshua chapter 3, it's an amazing picture. Put the ark on the shoulders of the priests. They'll go before you. Wherever the ark goes, you follow it because you've not been this way before. And really what God is doing in the church in this hour is he is leading churches. He's leading people in ways that they have never gone before. Unfamiliar territory. God wants to bring us into new territory, new land. He wants us doing new exploits for him. And he'll lead us in ways we've not gone before. And the only way to get there is to follow the ark, follow the presence of God. And he will lead us where we've never gone. And another truth, see, and this is where, this is where we have to learn to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. That sometimes he breaks outside of our programs. And he breaks outside of our ways of doing stuff. And sometimes following the Holy Spirit is not comfortable. It's not even convenient. 
In fact, it will make you feel uncomfortable sometimes. Why? Because there's a risk involved. Have you ever thought about Peter walking on water? There's Jesus out in the water. But it's not even in the middle of the day. It's not even calm water. It's a storm in the middle of the night. The most inconvenient time possible. Peter, come on out. Jesus, is that you? It's kind of dark. It's kind of hard to see. I think it's you. Hope it's not a ghost. The waves were high. There was no light. And there's Jesus saying, come and walk out into this. And a lot of times that's how it is when we serve God and we're following God. He's out there in this stormy sea and he's saying, come on out. And we're like, God, and this is what happens. We hear God. God, is that you? I hope it's you. I think it's you. It's either me, you, or the devil. <laughs> Worst thing that could happen when you step out on the edge of the boat is you drown and die. And if you drown and die, you'll be in heaven faster. Or you don't really have to drown. If your foot gets wet, pull it back into the boat. I'll tell you this. I would rather have a wet foot and step out and do something for God than sit in the boat of my comfort and familiarity and never do anything for God. Because sometimes there, there, you cannot, life in the spirit, you cannot remove the risk factor. You can't. There will always be a risk factor. When God is leading you somewhere, when he's speaking to you and he's telling you to do something, there's a risk factor. You can't get away from it. No matter how many times you have prophesied over somebody, the next time you go to open up your mouth and prophesy, there is still a risk factor. It's just part of the way it works. But Peter was willing to take a risk. He was willing to put his foot over the edge of the boat. And the moment he stepped on water, he walked on water. He did something no human has ever done before. And it's because he was willing to step out of his comfort zone, his familiarity. And if the church is to walk in resurrection power, we have to be willing to step out of our comfort zones, out of what's familiar to us, to follow God in his glory, to follow the moving of the Holy Spirit, and then to see radical things happen. Things that defy natural laws. But this is life in the spirit. This is not just waiting for revival to happen. It's not just waiting for God in the future to do something. It's life in the spirit now. It's getting alone with God and inviting Holy Spirit into your life and cultivating his presence so that as you're living your life, he's walking with you. And when you need him there, he's right there. And as he moves you and leads you and directs you, you start to see things unfold in your life that you never dreamed possible could happen. But because you're following him step by step by step by step, suddenly you're walking on water. And your life has gone somewhere you never dreamed it could go. And you're accomplishing things you never thought you could do. And you're seeing things happen that you only hoped could have happened. But I believe God is really calling the church into this third day. Where he's saying, yes, turn your heart to me. Yes, get healed. Yes, become whole. Yes, be revived and awakened and filled with me. But then don't just stay there. Be raised up. Let me flow through you. Let me release resurrection power through you. And he will. You know, you know the difference between someone who has a healing ministry and someone who doesn't? The person with a healing ministry is praying for people to be healed. And you might not see people healed right away. I've known some of the greatest worldwide healing ministries start. And as they first prayed for people, no one got healed. In fact, people died. But they kept praying. They kept moving. They kept moving. You know how you flow in the anointing? You keep moving. You don't let circumstances stop you. You don't even let apparent failure stop you. Oh, it didn't work. I won't pray anymore. No. 
keep moving, you keep praying, you keep believing, and eventually you will see that well open up and you will see miracle power and you will see the anointing of the Holy Spirit flowing through your life even when you don't even know what you're doing. Because a lot of times God will use us and we don't even know what we're doing. But He'll use us. When God first started using me, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to pray for anybody because it was not modeled for me. Physical healing, deliverance ministry, prophetic ministry, none of it was modeled for me. It was all learning first time as I stepped out into it. I didn't know how to pray for the sick. So my first healing service out on the road 12 years ago as an evangelist, I was in a church with drug addicts and prostitutes. It was a homeless outreach. And the whole room was filled with homeless people, drug addicts, and prostitutes. Great place for a healing service. And I didn't know what to do, so what did I do? I just said, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Come and heal people. That's all I said. And all of a sudden, the anointing flew, started flo flowing through the room. And one lady in the back screamed out, oh, and all the pain in her neck and back just got pulled right out of her body. She got instantly healed. And then a prostitute comes forward to get saved, and she gets slain under the Spirit, and all the demons start coming out of her. I'd never seen any of this before. I just said, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Holy Spirit, come in and do the work of the kingdom. And stuff started happening. First time I saw someone get delivered from alcohol, I was actually in youth group. I didn't know how to pray for someone to get set free. I just took my little finger, put it on the other teenager's forehead. I said, blood of Jesus. That's all I said. Blood of Jesus. All the demons came right out of them. Just all this blood of Jesus. Totally set free. Jumped up, started screaming, running all around. Delivered by the power of God. See, you have more power than you think. You have more power in you than you think. It's just a matter of releasing it and letting it flow. And letting it touch you. And then letting it flow out of you to other people. Like I said, get rid of all your demons. And then you're free and clear to help other people get rid of their demons. Praise God. It's a good idea. It's a good idea to get rid of all your demons. Praise God. Oh, I can feel the enthusiasm. Amen. I want to get rid of all my demons. Yeah, amen. Yeah, he's talking to me. I think I have him. Uh huh. He sees me. He sees me. I know it. He sees me. He knows it. He's looking at me. I told folks, I was in Australia preaching, and I told folks, I said, one day, I'm going to preach with a mirror, and I'm not going to look at myself. I'm going to turn around so that everyone else gets to look at what I get to look at for two hours. It is only fair, because you see everything from up here. It's like the eyes of God roaming to and fro. You see it all, all the faces. God wants to heal you. <laughs> God wants you to have joy. I'm telling you, one day I am going to give an altar call, not for people's hearts to get saved, but for their faces to get saved. It's a. <laughs> It's okay for our faces to get saved. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Just some Christians, they're so deep. They are deep Christians. They're very deep Christians. Jesus is very deep on the inside. The problem is he's so deep you can't see him. He wants to be seen. Amen. I love Jesus. I go to a great church. He saved me. He delivered me. Praise God.
free, 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 free. There is abundant life in Christ. There's freedom in Christ. There's life in Him. There's joy in Him. There's peace in Him. And this, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop with this statement. Abundant life has already been given. You just have to step into it and receive it. He has already given us abundant life. And because He's given us the Holy Spirit, everything we need in God is already on the inside of us. If the Holy Spirit is in you, the fruit of the Spirit is in you. The gifts of the Spirit are in you. All of it, it's on the inside of you. If you need love, love is already on the inside of you from the Holy Spirit. If you need peace, it's in there. If you need joy, it's in there. If you need self-control, it's in there. You have it because you have the Holy Spirit. You can't say, oh, I don't have self-control. Or, oh, I don't have patience. Oh, I just can't be kind. Oh, I just can't be. No, you can be. It's already in you. You just have to get the revelation that it's in you. I tell you, that set me free. That one truth set me free. When I say, oh, I don't have this, oh, I don't have that. No, I realize I do have it. I have all of it. I have all the fruit of the Holy Spirit, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's all in there. I don't even have to beg God for it. I don't have to beg Him for it. Oh, God, please give me love. No, I don't have to beg for love. His love is in me. Because He's in me. It's just letting Him out. He's like, hello, I'm in here. I really am in here. Let me out. See, church, we have to let him out. We have to let the resurrection power out. We have to let his glory out. We have to let him out to flow. Praise God. Thank you. Lord, we just thank you right now. Father, I thank you that you have sent the Holy Spirit. And God, you lead us into places we've never gone before. And I know in my heart, God, you are bringing even this church into territory and places that they have never gone before. Father, that it is in your heart for this house to be a habitation of the wine and the oil and the glory of God. A wineskin that will steward what you pour out these last days. A place of transformation. A place, Lord, where people will encounter you and be set free and healed and transformed into your likeness and image. And Father, I pray for each person here today. Father, I pray that that resurrection power that Hosea prophesied about that third day resurrection power would be manifested in each life here father i pray for a release of your resurrection power and presence father i pray that each one even in this room would be healed would be free would be whole would be empowered would be anointed to live the abundant life in christ Father, I loose abundant life over each one today. I loose abundant life. I loose resurrection glory. I release resurrection power. Not only for this church, but for this region. Today, if it's your heart to have a heightened sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, to really be Spirit-empowered and led by Him, just stand up to your feet and put your hand right on your heart. You see, because we do have three brains, and one of them is a heart brain. We have brain cells in our heart. We also have brain cells in our stomach, in our intestines. And the person of the Holy Spirit will talk to us and communicate to us and lead us and guide us on an intuitive level through our heart brain and our stomach brain. 
I have a whole teaching that goes way more in depth into it, but he lives in there. Holy Spirit lives in our heart and in our belly. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. It's where he flows from, where he leads you from. And Father, I pray right now for each person under the sound of my voice that there would be granted a heightened sensitivity to the voice of God, the leading of God, the prompting of God, the presence of God. That, Father, all of the gifts of the Spirit, all of the fruit of the Holy Spirit that is on the inside of us, I pray that it would come forth in our lives. Let the fruit, I call forth the fruit of the Spirit. I call forth the gifts of the Spirit. I call forth the fullness of God in each one of us today. Into the realm where there are no limits. Father, into your glory realm where all things are possible. The glory realm where all things are possible. Father, stretch forth your hand even in this closing moment. Stretch forth your hand and heal. Stretch forth your hand and deliver. Even now, I release healing power and God's healing presence. And I say be healed in the name of Jesus. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, I rebuke infirmity. I rebuke affliction. I command it to loose you and let you go. I command every trace of affliction, every trace of infirmity to come out of your body and to leave you now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I speak freedom over you right now. I thank you, God, that you're setting somebody free from fear right now. Anxiety right now is leaving in Jesus' name. Yeah, I just command anxiety and fear to leave your life in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke sleeping disorders, sleeplessness, insomnia. I take authority over it and I command it to loose you and let you go. Yep, there it is. There's the anointing right now. God is lifting that right off of somebody right now. The Lord is healing a heart condition right now. There's a heart condition being healed by the hand of God. I take authority over that heart condition and I command it to be healed. I command it to be made whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hand upon people all throughout this place. Quicken their mortal bodies. Quicken their inner man. Quicken their mind. Quicken their soul. In the name of Jesus, there's healing in his name. There's freedom in his name. There's deliverance in his name. restoration in his name and I speak right now the restoration of a relationship with a child a son a daughter right now I see the Spirit of God highlighting a broken relationship between a parent and a child and I speak healing and restoration into that relationship right now and I declare it shall be made new in the name of Jesus I declare it shall be made new. Thank you, Father, for that.
tell you, there's heart, there's heart conditions being healed right now. Hearts are being healed. Physical hearts are being healed. I loose it over you. I loose your heart from every infirmity. And I command your heart to be made brand new in the name of Jesus. Every part of it brand new. I loose it in the name of Jesus Christ. tell you God has given new hearts out and I just want to do this real quick if you have a heart condition just come up to the altar right now if there's a condition that you're struggling with in your heart just come right up and stand here as your feet touch this altar the power of God is going to start to go through your body and God is about to make things new yep there it comes comes in the name of Jesus I command your heart to be made brand new every affliction every infirmity every condition I say be made whole be healed in the mighty name of Jesus by his blood by the blood that was shed on the cross by the blood of Calvary by his stripes you are healed and I loose the stripes of Jesus that you are healed healed by the stripes of Jesus healed healed by the stripes of Jesus made completely whole Fire of God, fire of God, fire of God, fire of God, brand new heart, brand new heart, fire of God, fire of God, Shokaraba, Shandorobo, Shikiyaraba, Shandorobo, Shikiyaraba, Shandorobo, Shokaraba, Dorobo, Shikiyaraba, in the name of Jesus 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 Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy, Holy Ghost, Jesus, you are the healer. 
You are the physician. You work miracles, God. We lose miracles in this house, miracles in this place. Miracle anointing, miracle glory. Miracle glory in this place, oh God. Miracle glory. Miracle glory. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you see that anointing. That anointing is flowing. That anointing is flowing. That glory is flowing like a river. Like a river flowing. Yep. Like a river flowing. Flowing, flowing, flowing. Show karabashandelebe. Show karabande. Ho. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. He's moving. He's moving. He's moving. He's moving. He's moving. He's moving. I tell you, that's His glory. There's a glory atmosphere coming into the room right now. Anything is possible. You can receive whatever healing you need from God. There is a glory atmosphere coming into the room. Oh, is a back condition being healed right now? A lower back condition being healed right now? In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that thing off of you. I command it to loose you and let you go. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord. Show Karabande. Holy God. Holy God. Jesus. He's here, he's here, he's here, he's here, he's here, oh. he's here, 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 oh Jesus, Jesus, the glory God. God, your glory, God, your glory, God, your glory, God, your glory, God. Lord is healing bodies right now. Close your eyes. Right now in this moment, I there is a right shoulder being healed by the anointing of God right now. I take authority over that affliction in your right shoulder and I command it to loose you and let you go. And I say be healed. Healed. In the name of Jesus. Yep. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
I loose you right now from eating, from an eating disorder. Right now, the Lord is releasing somebody from an eating disorder, compulsive eating. Compulsive, emotional eating. God is setting you free from it right now. He's loosening you from it right now. I tell you, there's someone in the soul area. It's from, it's connected to the soul area. And God is releasing your soul from it right now. And your physical body is going to line up to freedom in Christ. And I take authority over compulsive eating and I command it to loose you and to let you go right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Just start to thank Him for it right now. Just start to thank Him for it. Jesus, we thank you for it. in the spirit is for every day it's for every day for every time you call on his name and you welcome the holy spirit in whether you're alone whether you're in church he's always there when you welcome him he draws near thank you jesus thank you jesus Come on, let's give the Lord a big praise in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, Jason. Let's just sing that. And I believe you're my healer. 